Check one, two. Go! Curious about real estate? Yes! Then you've come to the right place. Get the knowledge you need. Get over the fear and get started. This is the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show with your host, Michael Quarles. Hello, everybody. This is Michael Quarles with podcast number 131. Today's podcast, we have a scenario question sent in by an investor like yourself. And remember, if you have a question, send it to support at bsffacademy.com. One more time, bsffacademy.com. Here we go. I put a house under contract for seventy-two-five, and the property was probably worth around one forty. The seller signed the contract and the next day called saying that there was a problem. Now the seller is having second thoughts. I personally believe that another investor offered more. Should I record the contract against the deed to cloud the title? I think there's a couple things we can do here. First, I don't like the word probably. We have, okay, so I'm gonna read it again. I put a property under contract for 72.5 and the property is probably, well, well, why don't we find out what it is actually worth instead of being probably worth? Life's like, like almost ugly or almost beautiful. Well, it's either ugly or beautiful. It's, 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 so we got to have a figure there because maybe your property in reality is only worth 100000 and then you don't have a deal. So let's find out what it is actually worth. But let's assume for a second the probably is actual. So it, the property is worth one forty. The seller signed the contract the next day, and on the next day, called saying that there was a problem. I would wonder what the problem was. I'd ask the problem, what's the problem? Let the seller says, I'm deciding to back out. To that, I would say you can't. And if you use my agreement, it clearly, unless uh, we were weak and took it out, it clearly, 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 I can't say clearly enough, it clearly states that they will lose 25% of the purchase price or $50,000, whichever is greater, $50,000 is greater than 25% of the purchase price. That keeps them in the game. Now you cannot record the contract against the deed because you don't have it uh, notarized and you don't record the contracts anyway. You record a memorandum of contract, which you get signed in front of a notary that the day you open up the closing or open up the escrow. So you don't have that. You don't have the ability to cloud anything. But you can do something. I mean, you can uh, record a list pendings against the property. That clouds the title. That costs money with an attorney. You can uh, renegotiate with your seller, find out exactly what somebody else offered, and decide it for yourself if you want to renegotiate it. You know, there's a saying, you can't lose what you don't have, and you don't have anything. You. In, in the best case scenario, you have a piece of paper signed by a seller who indicated they have intention to sell you the property. Now they do not have that intention. Yes, you can force them to sell you the property, but however, the legal fees will cost you more than the profit potential will be when you do buy and resell the property. Here's what I do, and I think it's the best thing to do. I let the seller know that they can get out of my contract at any time they want. In order to do that, they have to take a 12-month deed restriction or allow a 12-month deed restriction with my name. That means if they try to sell the property within the next 12 months, then I have the first right to buy it at the original $72,500. If the seller doesn't want to do that, then I know they're trying to play games and sell it to somebody else. But if they're just wanting to keep hold of the property, maybe they decided to go ahead and stay there because we don't know until we ask, right? If they wanted to stay there, then I think that's the that's the moral and ethical thing to do. Protects me. It allows them to have what they want in the first place. I mean, and there's buy, there's seller's remorse, just like there's buyer's remorse. I mean, we can't go around like a gorilla beating everybody up just because they won't sell us a house. We have to understand why people do what they do and why they won't do what they won't do. And you know what? You may be right. There may be someone coming underneath you that had a better offer. I'd find out who that person was and congratulate them on their sell skills. I wouldn't be frustrated with that person at all. 
I would make sure that they knew that they couldn't do that again because I would stand firm on my belief system that if someone signed a contract with me that they're obligated to sell me the property, especially if they won't take my deed restriction, and I'll fall forward. But you know, again, going back to that statement, you can't lose what you don't have. You know, there's going to be contracts that we sign that won't, won't happen. I'll spend the money on the BPOs. I'll spend the money on the appraisals. And then during that time, someone else come in there and, and swoop it away. And we do what we do. And here's the deal, guys and gals. If you have more opportunity than you need, some of them you can throw away. It's about having opportunity. It's not about how this transaction's unwinding. If you had 14 of these transactions, one of them unwound, you had 13 left. Not a good, good number, but you had 13 left. Who cares? right? It's just one of those things. It's part of doing business. You know, when, when you go into a, a, a 7-Eleven AM PM, if you have those in your area and you go up to the Coke register and you're going to get you a, a fountain drink and on the right side is Coke and on the left side is Pepsi. You know what? They, it, it's their job to make sure they entice you enough to make you pick them. And you know, once you pick them, I guess you could fill up that cup, pour that cup back out because you just switched in your mind from Pepsi to Coke or Coke to Pepsi or whatever it was. And you know, you fill it back up with the other, the other beverage. But our business is about marketing. Our business is about having multiple opportunities to buy houses from folks. And that's what our business is. It's not about having the opportunity to buy a house. Can you imagine Pepsi running a business on, gosh, I, they, if we're gonna go out of business if they don't pick us. If they pick Coke one more time, we're gonna go out of business. Well, that's baloney. Do enough marketing that that doesn't happen. My goodness gracious. Thanks for listening to Buy, Sell, Fix, Flip. We'll be right back. Are you running out of leads? It's time you tried Yellow Letters at yellowletters.com. Get motivated seller leads through yellow letters, postcards, zip letters, typed professional letters, greeting cards, door hangers, and business cards. Yellow Letters is a full-service marketing company created with your success in mind. Get the personal attention you need to get your direct mail campaign started and get in touch at yellowletters.com. And we are back in three, three, two, two, one. one. You know, it's, it's okay to have abundance. It's okay to have prosperity and, and just go and grab it and, and, you know, fall forward with the seller, call them back, have an honest conversation with you. Explain to me exactly. Is it, did somebody else offer you a more, a big, bigger price? No, they didn't. They're going to say no right off the bat. No one's going to be ultra honest on that and ask them again. I'm sorry. I asked the wrong question. Ask the same question. Did someone offer you a better price? What is the seller's remorse about? Were we not closing fast enough? Were we closing too fast? Were we not offering enough money? Were we offering too much money? What was it? What exactly? What can I solve for you? Because my job as a real estate investor is to solve problems, make create win, win situations. And I want you to know that you can come to me anytime you have a situation and we can talk about it. So we can create a win-win situation. That's what we do as real estate investors. But, you know, until you can protect yourself and protecting yourself is with a uh, memorandum of contract, until you have that notarized by a seller, you don't have anything. You just have the promise that someone's going to do something. They say they did. They would. You know, people make, people make break promises all day long. That's what divorce is all about. And, um, you know, what you do is you learn from this. And you learn what you didn't do during the presentation that caused the seller to believe that you were the buyer, that they wouldn't talk to another buyer. What was it that you left uncertain in the mind of the seller? What was it that you didn't cover clearly enough that needed to be covered that they had to, that someone else could cover it and would make more sense? Because people don't want to give their word and then get out of giving their word to give it to somebody else. That doesn't feel good. I mean, no one wants to cheat on anybody. I guess there are cheaters in life. And if you have one of those as a seller, I mean, you don't have anything and you should have noticed that right out front. I mean, typically cheaters come out and expose themselves real fast. But if they weren't a cheater, no one wants to be that cheater. So something that you didn't do caused them to be a cheater. And you have to take it like that. 
and now your job is to go back and find out what went wrong. So you can learn from it at the very least. Even if they don't want to divulge exactly what went wrong and try to help you make it right on this transaction, get them to understand that I need to learn so I th that I don't enter this situation again. You'll be doing me a favor. It's okay that you've decided to do what you decided to do, and I'm not going to hold you uh, responsible for anything. I just want to be able to have this as a learning experience. If you take that road, maybe someone's going to be ultra honest with you. But I'm going to go back to that first sentence. I put the house under contract for 72.5, and the property is probably. Man, we've got to get those words out of our vocabulary. Am I probably in love with my wife? Oh, gosh. If I said, wife, I think I might love you. Yeah, that wouldn't go over really well. Or the day we got married and they, you know, they said, do you take her to be your, your wife? I say, well, probably. That wouldn't go over real well either. So we have to have words like yes, forever, will. Those those words that they're, you know, they are, they are. It is, it is worth 140. It is. And I bet you really what happened here is, is um, you bit them too far. Um, if it is worth 140 and you, you bought it for 72.5, you just got too greedy. You didn't give, you didn't, you didn't look at what the seller needed. You didn't ask enough questions. You didn't have empathy. Um, sometimes we have to put our, put the seller above us. Most of the times we should. I mean, you, 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 you basically racked this thing up at almost 50%. I mean, why? I mean, what, I mean, did you, did you take in consideration what the seller needed to, out of this transaction? And did you, did you cut so much away that they couldn't breathe that, that you were suffocating them on this purchase price? And if you did that, shame on you. Remember, we're supposed to find out how to create win-win situations. What's a win for them? What's a win for us? And sometimes we have to give them more than what we want to give them because it is the win-win situation we're, we're trying to achieve. We're not trying to achieve. We, we are the big guy on campus and, you know, pound our chest like we just beat everybody up. Well, we're not going to be a bully investor. This is not what this game's about. And, yeah, I buy houses at 50 cents too, but that's, you know, we still try to make sure what we are buying it at and what the seller needs. And there's been many times I've asked my Ryans to go back in and give the seller some more money when we looked at the transaction. Guys and gals, we've, we've got to, besides protecting ourselves, which we didn't do any of that here, we didn't have time to do that here, but we, we've got to protect these sellers. You know, some of them have been beat up their entire life. They, they, they need that, that, uh, re, that arm that's reached out to help them up. And, um, you know, it's just a deal. I mean, it's just a deal, okay? But it's their life. So help them up. Let them know that you're going to be there if they need you in the, in the future, if something goes wrong with the transaction they're in now. Because promises are, 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 are camouflaged sometimes. And it's not with reality. And so just because they've been promised to um, have been paid by somebody else more money doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to actually occur. And when it does or doesn't occur, if it doesn't occur, then you can stand up and say, hey, not that I told you so. That would be unfair. That would be ridiculous on your part. But be there when, when they need to be helped up back up again. And, you know, they're gonna, their pride and their ego is going to be bruised a little bit because, you know, they did what they did to you and, and you didn't have any choice except to take it. And so you need to let them know that it's okay. You know, you're bigger than that. And be bigger than that. Don't, don't belittle them. Don't, don't, don't do anything negative to them. And I um, always looked at, you know, what, God and Jesus Christ would ask me to do when I, when I in, enter into these situations. And it's, it's one of those, you know, when you, it's just one of those feelings you get when you're at the gas station and you can tell the guy or the gal that's pumping gas next to you and, and they're, they're, you know, they're putting $3 worth of gas in the car. Well, sometimes you just got to go fill up their tank. And, but you know, it's all about your personal perspective in life and whether or not you think that you have prosperity and in in an abundance mentality. I know I do. And I know the 20 or 40 or $70 that I'm going to spend filling up someone's tank that doesn't have the money to spend it on themselves is um, going to be a blessing. And um, I've been blessed enough. So 
why not pass it around? And um, hope that helped. I don't know if it, if I said anything that it that will sink in. Um, some will get it, I guess. And um, until until tomorrow, talk to you then. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. Get more info and stay in touch at michaelquarles.com.